Dante Gabriel Rossetti is one of the preeminent British Victorian painters. Uh, his work of four decades epitomizes what most people think of as the quintessential romantic uh, female heroine of the 19th century. Like any painter who paints human beings, he needed models uh, to pose for his paintings. And he had many models, family members, uh, colleagues, and paid professional models as well. But the most important model he had early on in his career was this woman, Elizabeth Siddle, who ended up being more than just his model, but she ended up being his muse. Rossetti first met Siddall when she posed for a friend of his for this painting, Twelfth Night, based on the Shakespeare play. And the friend of his, Walter Deverell, had met Elizabeth Siddall when he, Deverell, went shopping for a hat with his mother. And there at the hat shop, he encountered this lovely young woman working. And um, here she is playing Viola in his painting of Twelfth Night. And this character is the fool, and is the fool was posed for by Dante Gabriel Rossetti. In this close-up of uh, Lizzie as Viola, we see that she had very unusually pretty looks, but not just pretty aesthetic looks. Uh, she was very slight and pale, and she had a long, slender neck, and uh, lots of coppery golden hair, a straight nose, high cheekbones, and heavy lidded eyes that look quite romantic. When she and Rossetti met, they soon became romantically involved, and fairly soon after that, they actually became engaged. She moved in with him into his studio, and he began years of, of sketches that he would complete of her. And, in fact, they have counted thousands of, of sketches that he did of Elizabeth Siddall during these years. Uh, he also put her in many of his paintings as well. In the 1850s, he painted mostly watercolor works, and um, they're often uh, uh, topics from the poet Dante Alighieri, who wrote the Divine Comedy in 14th century Italy. Here we see her um, as a young woman coming in with a candle, reading a book, a member of the crowd. In this painting, uh, Rossetti paints her as Dante's love Beatrice in the Divine Comedy. And here she is as Beatrice. And in this painting he paints her as Leah in another illustration of Dante's work from the Divine Comedy. Unfortunately, uh, all this time that they were together, Elizabeth Siddall was mostly in very bad health. They believed that she had tuberculosis. And uh, he continued to sketch her always, but he also uh, was not always loyal to her. He uh, had affairs with other women, and she left him. She'd come back. Uh, but finally, after all this time, in 1860, he was told that she was on her deathbed. And then in guilt, he decided he really should marry her. He married her in 1860, and here's a, uh, a portrait he did of her for a wedding gift. It's called Queen of Hearts. They married in 1860. She had a stillborn daughter in 1861, and then in 1862 she died from an overdose of laudanum. Laudanum is an opiate drug, and it was highly prescribed in Victorian times particularly. And so here we see her one last time as a, in a character from the Divine Comedy. Uh, she's Beatrice. As she sits there staring upward, although not staring upward because her eyes were, are closed, a golden haze of light shimmers around her, while in the background the figure of Dante at the right there gazes at the figure at the left who is supposed to represent death. Uh, a sundial is pointed to the hour of Beatrice's death, and a dove drops a poppy onto her lap. Poppies, uh, which is what you get opium from, of course, have long symbolized either sleep or death, and I think in this case it also symbolizes the laudanum that took Elizabeth Siddall's life. Uh, when she died, uh, Dante Gabriel Rossetti felt so guilty that he took a book of poems that he'd been working on for many years. He was a poet as well as a painter, and he buried this book of poems in her beautiful hair in the casket, and they were buried with him. Only two photographs survive of 
of her and they're not very good. Here she is in a grainy photo. Uh, but his other muse, uh, Jane Morris, appears in many, many photographs. Uh, Jane Morris, whose uh, maiden name was Jane Burden, came into Rossetti's life when he saw her in Oxford. He was working in Oxford uh, painting a mural for the university. Like Mrs. Miss Siddall, uh, she uh, was from modest family. Her father was a blacksmith, but she was also very striking looking, and uh, Rossetti and she were probably immediately attracted to each other, and she began to model for him. However, uh, she learned that Rossetti had a fiancé, and as a practical young woman, Jane Burden decided that she would instead encourage the courtship of this young man, William Morris. Morris um, was only a student at the time, and he was actually Rossetti's painting student. And as you can tell from this painting, probably William Morris was not a great painter. Um, but he was a gentleman, and he had uh, money, and so when he painted this portrait of Guinevere, and Jane Burden posed for this portrait, she, and he then a proposed marriage to her while painting this portrait, she said yes. This is a, a photograph of the Morris family and some other friends uh, taken perhaps 10 years after uh, they were married. We see here Jane herself, now Jane Morris, William Morris, and their two daughters. And perhaps you can see from the seriousness on most people's faces that um, I don't think it was a very happy marriage. Uh, still, um, Morris and Rossetti continued to be friends, and in fact, they rented a home together and uh, called Kelmscott Matter. And uh, when William Morris was off traveling for business, the two were living together, Dante Gabriel Rossetti and, and Jane Morris, and uh, they rekindled their affection for each other and started an affair. And Rossetti, just as he had sketched Elizabeth Siddall, Rossetti sketched many, many portraits of the beautiful Mrs. Morris. and. Uh, we don't know for sure whether their relationship was totally sexual. He was addicted to a chloral hydrate at this point, which he took to help him sleep at night. But we do know that they definitely loved each other and were very, very close. Over and over he paints her, often looking sad. And uh, here she is in the daydream from 1880. And we see uh, also a photograph of her from a few years before. And we see that even though a, one might think that Rosetti exaggerated her features. When you see in the photograph, really, she had these features, a strong, um, strong jaw, long, slender neck, um, bee stung lips again, and this wavy, wavy black hair. He often painted her in jewel colors, uh, not quite as bright as they were in his watercolors of Elizabeth Siddall. And he particularly liked to paint her um, as a character who is being treated cruelly by her husband. He probably painted the subjects to make himself feel better for um, betraying his friend William Morris. Here she is in another story by Dante uh, in which the, this woman has been locked up in a tower and she's starved to death because her husband doesn't trust her. And here she is as the character Persephone, who is from Greek mythology. Persephone is forced into marrying Hades, who's the god of the underworld. And obviously, she's not very happy in her marriage either. Uh, over the years, they kept up a relationship till the late 1870s when Rossetti became erratic in his behavior because of his addiction to chloral and also the Morris's child became ill and I think that her illness brought Morris and his wife back together again. Uh, but throughout his life Rossetti continued to see Jane as his muse. He painted and sketched her many times and even though they were never romantic again with each other after the late 1870s, they can still continued uh, to be very close friends, kept up their correspondence with each other. In 1882, uh, Rossetti's body was ravaged by the effects of chloral hydrate, and he died. Here's a portrait done of him by one of his Victorian painter friends. It's, I'm sure, idealized, but it's still a very moving sketch of Rossetti on his deathbed. He died finally uh, as a result of the addiction, the same kind of addiction that had killed his wife, Elizabeth Siddall.